Okay, hopefully I'm broadcasting. This is my first time using a YouTube Live. It's going to take about 20 seconds <laughs> for the, my delay. Um, I'm Stormy Bob Swanson. I'm a singing weatherman. Uh, most of the time, I am a teacher. I teach at Mississippi State University, and I teach physical science, and I teach astronomy. But I also uh, spend time going around to schools and doing presentations about weather and astronomy. And just so happens today... I'll be doing an astronomy presentation, so I'm actually going to switch it over to my PowerPoint. And what you should be seeing is some pictures of my family from the last couple of summers. Uh, two summers ago, we did a weather show, and last summer we did an astronomy show. And this coming summer, I was planning on doing a show called Sky Stories uh, for summer reading programs across the state of Mississippi where the theme is storytelling and myth and fantasy. And we'll have to see how the uh, summer tour goes this year because most of us are self-isolating. But in lieu of that, I'm very happy to, to get a chance to present for you folks. Uh, so I wanted to first start out with a... because uh, was Well, actually, I wanted to, first of all, invite you to join in the presentation by going to slido.com. And when you go to slido.com, you can just punch in the word tornado. I'm not sure if it's case sensitive or not, but if you type in tornado, you should be able to join our session. I'm going to have a couple of questions, as you know, some poll questions, as well as a chance for you to ask me questions at the end of the presentation. So there's also a QR code. So hopefully, I'm going to give you a few seconds to, to hopefully join in on that. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and advance things then. So I wanted to first start out with a children's story that I wrote many, many years ago. And my plan is to present this at libraries. And it's a weather-themed children's story entitled Tom the Well-Weathered Turtle. I'm going to turn off my audio so it doesn't play on me. And I'm going to... I'll share the, uh, the story with you. It was a sticky spring day in a quiet Florida swamp, and Tom Turtle was not happy. He was not happy because he was too hot. The sun was hot, the water was hot, even the shade was hot, and so was Tom. Tom's mother got tired of hearing his complaints. His family liked the heat, but Tom did not. He was different. Tom decided to take a walk, hoping to catch a cool breeze. It sure is hot inside this heavy shell, Tom thought. He rested in the shade of a mangrove tree. Ah, now this is more like it, Tom thought. I'm feeling better already. Wait a minute, was that a drop of rain I just felt? It sure was a drop of rain, and before Tom knew what was happening, hundreds of drops of rain were hitting the ground faster and faster, harder and harder. Tom jumped into the swamp and swam as fast as he could toward home. What Tom didn't know was that a tornado was forming directly over the swamp. The swirling winds picked up everything in sight, including everything in the water, including Tom. Up, 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 he went higher and higher into the storm. Soon Tom was so high in the clouds, he could no longer see the ground. After what seemed like hours, Tom fell out of the storm and could see the ground again. He was falling toward it, and it was coming up fast at him. Thwack! And everything was dark. A turtle falling out of the sky soon got the attention of a crowd of forest creatures. Why, hello there, said a little rabbit. You look like you've never seen snow before. Hold on. Who are you? Where am I, and what is this snow you're talking about? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Robbie Rabbit. This is Putty Porcupine and Billy Goat. You're in East Tennessee in snow. Well, you're sitting in it. Listen, Patty, now that I know what snow is, I'd like to get away from it as soon as possible before I freeze to death. Snow is cold, but also slippery. Come slide with Robbie and me. See you at the bottom. Tom wasn't sure if he could get himself going fast enough to slide. Billy Goat said, Listen, I'm too heavy to slide down the hill. I'll have to walk, but I'd be happy to give you a push. Ready? 
Gee, thanks. Whoa! Tom rocketed down the mountain. The same smooth shell that was so heavy to carry around just happened to make the perfect sled. Robbie had a plan to get Tom back to Florida. The trick was to get him onto the produce truck. Robbie and Billy snuck into the garden, distracting the farmer. Patty positioned herself near a crate full of cantaloupes, and Tom, protected from her sharp quills, climbed onto her back and onto the truck. The truck sped away, with Tom safely stashed in one of the crates. After many hours of sitting among the cantaloupes, Tom finally made it back to Florida. Tom fell out of the truck, unhurt, thanks to his hard shell, and soon was back in the safety of the swamp. He would never complain about the swamp being too hot again. He even had a second helping of crickets and chili sauce at dinner that night. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, so um, I'm going to, first of all, make sure you're paying attention. So I'm going to try to open up a quiz question for you. Again, this is at slido.com, and the event name is Tornado. And I want to see whether or not you know the name of the goat in the story. So let's see if I can get this to work. Okay, so I've, I've at least gotten one vote, <laughs> and it shows that Billy is the name of the, the goat. Um, hopefully that's displaying properly. All right, let's try. All right, let's try a different question, which is, what was the moral of the story? You know, a lot, of, a lot of stories have morals and a little lesson to be taught. So let's, uh, let's try that. So let me activate that poll. All right, I'm not sure if it's working or not. So, okay, good. I'm seeing at least one, which is uh, to appreciate where you are. Be content with what you have. That's terrific. That's great. Let me, uh, let me switch back to my camera while we're, while, we, we'll chat about it real quick. So, yeah, when I, when I wrote that story, I didn't have any particular lesson in mind, but uh, once I had, had it written, I reflected on it, and there's a couple of things that I notice in that story. First of all, uh, you know, what gets Tom in trouble to begin with? The fact that he kind of wandered off and didn't tell anybody where he was going, right? Um, so that's one, perhaps, lesson is to, of course, you know, make sure mom and dad always know where you're, where you're at. Um, also, a very important lesson is to be weather aware. You know, he should have been checking the forecast uh, before he started to wander off. So I think that's maybe perhaps another lesson uh, is to always you know, have an eye toward the weather when you're going out to play. Uh, a couple of other lessons are, you know, as w was mentioned by the group, you know, you know, be content with you know, what you have and be, be happy with what you have. And in the case of Tom, you know, he, his first complaint or his early complaints were that you know, he's got this heavy shell and it's hot and that kind of stuff. But notice how his heavy shell turned out to be a real advantage for him. In several cases, he was able to slide down the mountain using it like a sled. Uh, his sharp or his his hard shell protected him from Patty's sharp quills to get onto the truck. He was able to fall to the ground without getting hurt when he got off the truck. Um, so there's a lot of you know things that might appear to be disadvantages, but in some cases they can be advantages. So that's another another lesson that the the story seems to uh, to kind of have in it. 
Okay, let me switch back to my PowerPoint real quick. Actually, no, I'm going to let me stay here. Uh, no, I, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. I'm sorry. I um, wanted to share with you, you know, the, the whole idea behind my program this summer is, is storytelling. And if you like those pictures in that story, they were actually drawn about 15 years ago by a neighbor of mine in Piney Flats, Tennessee. I was living in Northeast Tennessee at the time. A young guy named Ethan Stokes. He was a teenager at the time. I think a young teenager. And he made those drawings for me. And I did the animations more recently. But, of course, I lost contact with Ethan you know, over the years. And in animating the illustrations and kind of reviving the story, I chased him down. And it turns out that you know, it's interesting that Ethan's got a story. Ethan has gone from being a young artist, and now he's, work, he's got a Ph.D., and works at the University of Alabama. So, uh, you know, good things happen. He's a talented guy, and uh, he's done very good things, and I'm sure there are plenty of other good things he'll be doing in the future. Okay, I um, wanted to show you some demonstrations, things you can do at home. So, I guess the first one I wanted to show you is, I've got a bottle here. And this bottle is filled with water. It's a two-liter bottle. And up at the very top, if you notice, there's a Heinz ketchup packet. And I do this in my weather presentations when I'm talking about pressure. Because pressure is a really important concept to understand in meteorology. Air pressure, okay, the weight of the air on top of us. And pressure is one part of meteorology, like I mentioned. And there's a bunch of different laws that you can learn about in meteorology, it's essentially called fluid dynamics. But you don't want to know about all that stuff. Hopefully, you think that I'm a pretty smart guy. All right, so what I'm going to try to do is see what's happening to that ketchup packet. It's floating in the bottle of water, right? Why do things float? As you've learned perhaps in school or mom and dad can talk about, the ketchup packet is less dense than the water in the, in the bottle which is why it's floating. Things that are less dense float on things that are more dense. Okay, now I'm gonna to try to make this ketchup packet sink using the power of my mind. You ready? We gotta think really hard. Okay. Sink, ketchup packet, sink. 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 I made the ketchup packet sink. Look at that. So the ketchup appears to be more dense than the water now, right? Now I can say, rise, ketchup packet, rise. Rise, ketchup packet, rise. Rise, ketchup packet, rise. And it does, right? This looks like magic, doesn't it? Let me, let me see if I can try a different trick. What if I can say, okay, ketchup packet, go about halfway and stay there. All right, ketchup packet, go about halfway and stay there. Go about halfway and stay there. Aha. Pretty cool, huh? What I'm really doing in this little demonstration is I'm using three laws, what I call three of the four horsemen of fluid dynamics. First of all, the ketchup packet is less dense than the water, but now all of a sudden it becomes more dense. How is that possible? Well, as you'll learn, density is mass divided by volume. And what I'm doing is I can't change the mass of the ketchup packet, but I can change its volume. I can make it a little bit smaller by squeezing on it. And of course, I can't squeeze on the ketchup packet directly. I have to squeeze on the bottle. So that's what I'm really doing. I'm squeezing on the bottle. And by squeezing on the bottle, the bottle squeezes on the water. The water squeezes on the ketchup packet. That's something called Pascal's Law. That pressure that I'm applying to the bottle gets transmitted throughout the fluid and helps to squeeze the ketchup packet. The ketchup packet gets a little bit smaller because of the increased pressure on it. That's something called Boyle's Law. And then by making the ketchup packet a little bit smaller, its density becomes a little bit larger than the density of water, and therefore it sinks according to Archimedes' principle. So those are some, that's, you know, it's a really quick demo. You can do it in a two liter bottle. You can do it in a small bottle. The important thing is that you find a ketchup packet that's pretty close to the density of water. You might get a, not all ketchup packets are the same. Get, a, get several of them, put them in a bowl of water to see which ones float easily, which ones don't float at all. And find one that's just about on the, on the edge of the same density of water. Okay, let me go back to my PowerPoint real quick. I wanted to talk about, actually, let's see, I guess I'll stay here. So I wanted to show you this other 
demo that you can do. And this is what I call a tornado in a bottle. It's two two liter bottles. It's got a connector here. You fill the one with water. You turn it upside down. You give it a spin. And it looks like a tornado, right? Pretty cool. Not really a tornado, because it's made out of water. But it looks like a tornado, and it's kind of kind of neat. Now, you can get these connectors online. Um, and you can make your own connector. I've, I, I, I like the ones that are already pre-made for me. But if you've got a lot of time on your hands, you can use the existing caps of your bottles and some duct tape. And the important thing is that you sort of constrict. I'm going to show you what this looks like. So notice it's got kind of a small, small hole there. So my suggestion would be get your normal caps, get mom or dad to drill a hole through the normal caps, and then kind of duct tape or perhaps you can use some silicone caulk to kind of combine it all together. And then you should be able to make perhaps your own cap. So that's a project you can work on at home during our self-isolation. Okay, speaking of tornadoes, if you really want to go whole hog, I wanted to show you another thing you can perhaps do at home. It's a little bit more work, a little more uh, your mom and dad are going to help out, have to help out with, but uh, see what you think. Turn off my audio again. Okay, so this is a demonstration, what I, I call a tornado in a box. And you need a few things. Of course, you need your parents' help to assemble a lot of this stuff. Uh, you need a hot plate with some water in it. Uh, a hot plate with a pan and some water in it. Uh, I add a little bit of glycerin, and I'll talk about that. Uh, talk about why in just a few minutes. But you also need a source of light. So I've got a lamp here. Leave that off for the time being. Um, and you need, most importantly, a box. Uh, and I'm gonna give you instructions as far as how to build this box. And it's not just any box, it's a special box. So what's gonna go on is, I've got my water heating up on the hot plate. And that water, as it heats up, turns into steam, water vapor. And the water vapor rises. And as that water vapor rises, there's nothing left at the surface of the pan. I'm creating an area of low pressure. And as we've talked about, nature does not like having nothing there. So we have high pressure air from, we've got a visitor as well. I've got high pressure air that moves in to take the place of the air that's been rising. So high pressure moves to low pressure, then that air gets heated as well, and it rises. So I get what's called a convection current. And that would not be a very exciting demonstration. My pan of water would just boil away. That's where the box comes into play. I'm gonna put my box around the hot plate. My box has two plastic sides and two solid sides. And notice that in each side, there's a slit cut. So what's gonna happen is when I put my box around over my hot plate, Air is going to rise through the top, and the air from the room is going to try to go in and take the place of the air that's been rising, but it can only go, through, go in through these slits. And by the air coming in through the slits, it's going to create some spin. And as the steam spins, hopefully we'll see a tornado. Okay, so once you get a good amount of steam going in your pan, now is the time to put your box around your hot plate. I'm going to put my, hot, my box around my hot plate, and now, this works best in a nice dark and kind of calm room where there's not a whole lot of air conditioning or heating going on. I've also got a fan. And my fan I'm going to use to help to increase my draw over the, over the hot plate. So, I turn my fan on, I turn my light on. So the hot plate heats the water. The water creates steam. The box spins the steam. My flashlight, my lamp, helps to show that steam off just a little bit more. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I added a little bit of glycerin to my water, and that, for whatever reason, appears to make a little more steam, making my tornado a little bit more visible. 
But there you have it. It's a tornado in a box. It's a project you can do at home with the help of your parents. Okay, so I hope you like that. I'm going to uh, show you where you can find the plans for that. So there's actually there's a website called tornadoproject.com. That's where I found the plans for this. I've I've made mine out of wood, but my original versions that I used to take around were actually just made out of cardboard. And so once you're at Tornado Project, you go to the Storm Cellar and go to the Workshop. Click on the Workshop. Hopefully. There we go. And there are the plants. I'll tell you the materials you'll need. They use, they, they mentioned dry ice. I've never really used dry ice. I tend, because I don't have a good, good source for dry ice, so I just tend to use steam. But they show you essentially the basic measurements and how to cut it out, how to assemble it. And that's what my old versions used to be like. And like I said, I've made a wood one just to make it a little more durable. But that's how you do it. So that's a project that it's a little more involved, but it's something you can do at home. Okay, I guess, let's see what, what I've got else in my little slideshow here. Yeah, okay, before I get to questions, let me go back. Um, I wanted to do a song, because I, I am known as the singing weatherman, so why not do that? So, let me turn my webcam on. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of assistance for my song here. I'm going to get at least one of my sons, and maybe two of my sons, to help me out with this. It's a song called The Weather Wiggle. I'm going to turn my mic audio up a little bit. I'm going to be a little bit farther away. Okay, oh, there's Nate. So Nate is an orange. Got my son, Henry, right over here. And we're going to, going to do a song called The Weather Wiggle. So, and I, ho I hope you're all standing up and getting ready to, to, this is a dance number. It's an audience precipitation number. Get it, audience precipitation. So make sure you're up and dancing. Moms and dads, get your cameras ready, because I'd love to get some pictures or some video of your kids doing this song called The Weather Wiggle. So here are the steps. Okay, it's called The Weather Wiggle, so we all have to be able to wiggle. Can we all wiggle? All right, good. The first step is we're gonna pretend we're shoveling snow. I know it's April in Mississippi, but we're going to shovel snow anyway. Okay, the second step is we're going to make the sound of hail when it hits the ground. Hail are, are the, that, those chunks of ice that come out of thunderstorms and hit the ground. So we're going to stomp our feet. The third step is we're going to pretend uh, we're going to make the sound of lightning and thunder. And with lightning and thunder, we get rain, right? That's the fourth step. The fifth step is we're going to pretend we're blowing in the wind. And the last step, we're going to not get too carried away, but you know, we're at home. Uh, we're going to follow our left shoulders going counterclockwise, like most do in the Northern Hemisphere. We're going to spin like tornadoes. And we'll be repeating a lot of these steps, so if you get confused, look to Henry and Nate, and they'll be on the right step. It's not even a riddle. Now make it laugh, make it even make it giggle. Do the weather, do the weather, do the weather wiggle. Everybody wiggle. The first step is easy, one you all know. Just pretend that you are shoveling big piles of snow. The second step is cool, it can never fail. Stomp your feet on the ground like falling down hell. Rain that washes matter from the water spout. 
stood hell, lightning, rain. It might make you laugh, it could even make you giggle. Do the weather, do the weather, do the weather wiggle. Give the next step your best, cause we're getting near the end. Wave your hands above your head like you were blowing in the wind. The last step is fun, I don't care if you missed a spin. Yourself around like a tornado or a twister. Terrific. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. Let me go back to my PowerPoint real quick. And I'm going to field some questions if they're out there. All right. So let me see if I can figure out how to view questions if we have some. Audience Q&A. All right, I'm not seeing any questions yet, which is all right. Give it a few seconds. Right. And uh, I'll wait a few more seconds for any, any questions that might roll in. But uh, if you enjoyed my program, check out my website, which is stormandswanson.com. I am also uh, findable on Facebook. And moms and dads out there, if you did get a chance to, uh, to take some photos or shoot some video, uh, tweet them. Tweet them and uh, tag me. I'm at Storm and Swanson. And uh, if you want to hashtag it Digital Wiggle, that would be super, super cool. Let's see. Oh, okay. There's a question. Okay. Great. One question that just came in from Bentley is, what inspired you to become a weatherman? That's a great question uh, because a lot of kids become fascinated with weather at a really uh, early age. You know, if a tornado moves through the neighborhood or, or something like that, a big, big weather event occurs at a young age. For me, I was actually a science teacher right out of college. I studied science in college, and I taught high school for a couple of years. And I had an interest in being on television. And I thought, gosh, where do you, what kind of a... Actually, I'll switch back here to my webcam um, so I can actually chat with you. Um, so that's a great question, Bentley. Um, I thought, gosh, on TV, where do you find a scientist? You know, where, who, who's a scientist that's often on television? The weatherman. And so I actually went back to grad, to graduate school and studied meteorology, uh, with the, my intent of you know, doing TV weather. So I did TV weather for about five or six years. Uh, and then I did an additional four years, uh, working for USA Today, doing the weather page for them. So I spent about 10 years as a professional meteorologist, but... I didn't really have that big event. I was not a riveted by weather at, a, at an early age, though I know a lot of my colleagues who that, that happened to them, uh, and perhaps even my own children. We, we had a tornado move through our neighborhood uh, in 2014 when we were living in Tupelo, Mississippi. And uh, that, those kind of childhood events can be uh, quite, uh, quite effective in, in kind of guiding your career path. Another question that came in says, uh, is there a brand of ketchup packet that works better? <laughs> uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Um, this, is, this is a 
Heinz ketchup packet, I believe. Uh, the main thing is, again, that you look for something that has a density right around the density of water. So if it's just barely floating, that's the right packet. Uh, there are, I've had some students who have used you know, packets of soy sauce, so it doesn't necessarily have to be ketchup. Um, anything that's just, just about the right density is going to work for you. And another question says, what inspired you to write the, the Tom the Well-Weathered Turtle? Um, and, well, gosh, the reason why I wrote it initially was because I was just starting to do, do children's presentations uh, or school presentations, and I didn't really have something for the younger set. Um, and so I decided to just write, try to write a children's story. And so I wrote the children's story first, and then was lucky enough to have a neighbor who was talented to do the illustrations. And um, he did the illustrations for me and uh, kind of took off from there. So it was not, I'm not, an, not really a children's author. Uh, I tend to write more children's songs, but uh, the chance to write a children's story was kind of fun. And now to actually make it sort of come to life, I, I enjoyed the process of animating those illustrations using Powtoon and kind of creating a small little video. Ooh, here's another question saying, were you ever a weatherman on television? Yes. I spent uh, about six years doing TV weather. I started in Altoona, Pennsylvania, a little station called WTAJ in Altoona, Channel 10, I believe. And then I worked for two years in Fort Smith, Arkansas at KHBS KHOG 4029, an ABC affiliate in Fort Smith. And I worked for three years at WJHL News Channel 11 in Johnson City, Tennessee, which is Northeast Tennessee. And as I mentioned then, after my TV days were over, I spent, a, spent about four years working as a, uh, working in the print and online world, working for USA Today, the nation's newspaper, doing the weather page for them. Okay, well, great. Well, I think we've run about 30 minutes, and it looks like I've gotten through all the questions that came in. Again, I'll remind you to, uh, to check out my webpage, stormandswanson.com, my Facebook page, Storm and Bob Swanson. And again, tweet me some good pictures of you out there dancing and enjoying the weather wiggle and hashtag it digital wiggle. Thank you all for joining me. And uh, thank you to Chanel Varani at Moorhead State for inviting me to be a part of this as well.